Hi, welcome to this part of my guide and review of the Flextail Solo Adventuring Toolkit. If you haven't seen the other parts of this guide and review, please check out the playlist in the description below. This time we are going to go through a section that covers solo only adventures, pre-generated modules, that is modules that you play with your group as a traditional RPG experience, but that you decide to run as a solo adventure using different tables. And there's also going to be information on dynamic solo adventures. Like all of the other parts, I am going to read through some key paragraphs and I'm going to give my opinions on different things related to these topics. Let's start with solo only adventures. These are pretty self-explanatory. I don't need to read the paragraphs to you because the information presented here is quite basic. I'd rather give you my opinion on solo only adventures. There are many great solo only adventures out there, like for example, Deluxe Tunnels and Trolls has many solo adventures from Flying Buffalo and other publishers. My favorite ones outside of Flying Buffalo are the Tavern Master modules or adventures. And there's also adventures from the Mutant Epoch role playing game. Those are also great. And what I love of the Deluxe Tunnels and Trolls adventures and the Mutant Epoch adventures is that they are quite replayable. Depending on the path that you take and the different random tables, it's always going to be a different experience. You will have to play the adventure dozens and dozens of times to exhaust all of the possibilities. So yes, I think they are great, but if you are looking for a more an experience that approaches the traditional RPG experience, this isn't exactly it because they feel more like like those books of choose your own adventure or choose your own path. So there are going to be limitations. It's not going to be a complete railroad, but rather you have different sets of rails to choose from. So even if you have many choices, you always feel like you cannot escape or move away from certain pathways. That's the disadvantage. But other than that, because they are customized, they are completely tailored for the solo experience, you can get immersed into an illusion that you are actually playing with a game master or a dungeon master, or even better, sometimes you feel as if you are actually within that fictional setting. And then we have information on solo play with existing modules. Concerning this particular section that is covering solo only adventures, existing modules, dynamic adventures, there is some information that feels a bit like a repeat of what has been seen in previous sections. So I am going to avoid reading all of those paragraphs that I feel just repeat what has already been explained or talked about. When it comes to existing modules, there are two ways of doing this. You have read ahead, which is reading the entire module and then running the adventure for yourself with you participating as a solo adventurer. But the main disadvantage is that you already know all of the secrets of the adventure, all of the secret rooms, the traps, the enemies that you're going to be facing, the plot twists, the intrigues, the uh, lies, the secrets, all of that is going to be spoiled. You are already going to be aware of what is going to happen. So you need to randomize things. In this solo adventuring toolkit, they give you that set of tables, the ashtrays tables that we talked about in a previous part. And with those ashtrays tables, you can randomize the content. But I also mentioned in that part of the guide and review that I also recommend that you cut up the different scenarios, the enemies, pick them apart, take this enemy from this room, this trap from this other room, this uh, furniture or this corridor, this hall, this section of the wilderness, this particular clearing in the forest, pick it apart, create your tables with those elements, and then build your adventure as a dynamic experience. I prefer it like that. There is also the runtime reading technique or method. This is quite simple. You basically do not read ahead. You start reading the module and playing the module at the same time. However, this doesn't always work. You need a module or a campaign that is not very complex or too connected between encounters because otherwise there could be some very complex meta plots, very finely tuned storylines that could fall apart if you do not read ahead of time. 
and because things could be potentially too connected as you are playing encounter by encounter and because you do not know that an encounter very far ahead in the adventure is connected to a situation that you are experiencing in the current encounter yes things can get quite messy plot threads can be cut off or entangled in very very messy ways so it doesn't work with all of the modules you need to check ahead of that you need to talk to other players you need to read the blurbs of the different adventure modules to see more or less if a particular module is suitable for that style i would recommend that you try this with the beyond the wall role-playing game there is even a, a more recent version of that role-playing game it's an old school renaissance style of, of game that is i don't remember the name but it's in the style of Robert E. Howard and Clark Ashton Smith. It's more like classic sword and sorcery and, and weird fantasy. I'm going to put the links in the description below. And that publisher, the publisher from that game, releases these modules that I think are quite suitable because all of the encounters are somewhat disconnected from each other. You have these tables to randomly generate different plot elements. So that way, you can take on an encounter, just read the first encounter, do not read ahead, take on that encounter depending on the elements that you generate by using the tables, and when you complete that encounter, then keep reading, and so forth. That's a good way of handling the runtime reading style. I also recently purchased a bundle of holding bundle that contains a lot of indie games, well, several indie games, and amongst those games, you have the ultraviolet grasslands. It is a weird setting, but because you have this sort of like crawl, like a sandbox setting, I think there is potential to also play it as a solo experience by just starting in the map and then facing each encounter without reading ahead of time. So check it out. I think the offer is still up. I think it expires in a few days since the time of this review. So hurry up and check it out please so to sum things up i would recommend that you try to look for those modules that have encounters that are not very tightly connected with each other or that the general plot line is not affected if some encounters do not work in harmony with each other that way you can run that module or even an entire campaign it depends as a runtime reading experience without reading ahead reading each encounter as you take it one step at a time. After this, we have information on how to adjust the rewards. Sometimes you want to take on adventures with a number of player characters that do not match the recommended number of player characters in the module or adventure. So maybe you want to run an adventure that is recommended for a group of four player characters and you are running it with only three or two, or maybe six or eight, it depends. Here you have all the information on how to adjust the rewards for that. There could also be a discrepancy of levels of experience. That is, maybe you are playing a module for level 5 characters and you are running it with level 3s, a larger group of level 3 characters or level 8 characters. It depends. And then we have details on dynamic solo adventures. You already know this. This is the classic solo RPG experience. When you are generating all of the encounters, the enemies, the treasures, the traps, as you are playing along. And here they mention that, that there could be some modules that also support this with some random tables, random events. You have a list of pros. Dynamic adventuring is really the only way to ensure you, as a solo player, are truly surprised by the adventure content. This approach is also a mechanism to provide endless questing. There is no end to the adventure if you wish it to be so. Yes, you can play it indefinitely. The adventure ends when you want it to end, when it is logical, following the chain of events. Or maybe you have some other mechanism to determine the ending of the adventure. So for example, in the case of the solo adventuring toolkit, you have a method to create quests with a sequence of events and the ending of that quest line is quite obvious, quite easy to determine based on the structure. And then we have information on the cons. Though dynamic adventuring can produce a sprawling story with unexpected and thrilling linkages, it can also generate somewhat nonsensical elements. For example, the Thieves Guild leader 
was really the king in disguise all this time. And he was also posing as the brothel madame. So some things may not make too much sense. But for the creative individual, this results in some very unique adventures. So going back to that example, maybe the result of the Thieves Guild leader being the king in disguise, maybe was not exactly that. Maybe he was disguising himself as the leader of a, of a single guild and he was actually the king of all Thieves Guilds. So you could modify things like that. It's your adventure, it's your solo experience. And when it comes to being a brothel madame, maybe he actually poses as a brothel madame. Maybe he has some sort of ring or belt that changes his gender. Or maybe he's just really good at using makeup and disguises and costumes. So I don't see a problem in that regard. And here it says that some game masters or dungeon masters and some players have a lower tolerance for ambiguity. And yes, I have actually seen some players that really cannot get into solo adventuring because they have uh, some problems when it comes to adjusting the sequence of events based on the results of the emulators, oracles, tables and such. Maybe one of these days I should create a video where I talk about the right attitude for solo role-playing game sessions. And at the end of this section, you only have a few paragraphs that, as I mentioned earlier, they feel a bit like repeats of information that has been seen in previous sections. To sum things up, to organize the main points of this section, when it comes to my tips and advice, I would recommend that you run solo adventures, solo only adventures, when you are not bothered by the selection of rails or railroads within the adventure because you are choosing a particular path even if there are many random elements within that path yes you feel sometimes pulled into very specific directions but if you are having fun in those pathways in those railroads in those directions i don't think it will bother you now when it comes to running pre-generated modules using the tables in the solo adventuring toolkit like I said, find those modules that are not too susceptible to the changes brought about using the tables from the Solo Adventuring Toolkit. And I think in my particular case, in my personal case, I think it's somewhat of a waste when you see those incredible mega adventures like mega dungeons or just really long adventures that take place through several different areas and zones with intricate bloodlines. And when you uh, butcher them, using solo tables, you may feel a bit like, yes, like things are not exactly comfortable or right. When it comes to preserving the integrity, the structural integrity of the module as a whole, but if you are not bothered by that, or like I said, if you found some modules with disconnected encounters or that the plotline is somewhat loose, it's going to be excellent, especially those sandbox settings or modules or any sort of a loosely connected sequence of encounters and remember to check out the links in the description below because I am going to give you some suggestions on a few modules that you can play like that and concerning dynamic solo adventures well they are great you need practice when you first start to get into solo RPGs you may feel a bit clumsy with your first attempts so I am going to create that video giving you some tips and advice on what I would consider is the right attitude for a solo RPG experience. Well, thank you for watching this part of the guide and review. If you have any comments or questions, please let me know. And thank you so much to those of you that have been supporting the channel by sending drive through RPG gift certificates. If anyone else wants to further support the channel, the information on how to do that will be in the description below. Once again, thank you and see you later.